in this video we are going to discuss about the other options available in a course that is the pending request upload courses and uh, restore course so these three options we will discuss so let's discuss first the pending request uh, the pending request is generally um, uh, means responsible for approving the courses which have been received on request so those courses will be displayed here and uh, accordingly the approval by the user who has the privilege of approving the course will be given here so right now we do not have any course uh, request here pending for approval but the space means uh, this is the place where the approver has to reach and approve the course similarly there is another option that is the restore course restore course is basically related to the import of the backup file in case you already have a backup of the course so that uh, can be imported here with the restore course option so for that you need that backup file and simply you just attach the file and click on restore and uh, this will get restored and your course will be ready to use and there are uh, other options also available here like course backup area so these two we will discuss later that how we can use the course backup area and user private backup area uh, but most important is the backup file import in the re, uh, resource uh, restore course and the last option in the course is the upload course the upload course enable the teacher or administrator to upload the course through file and uh, not required to create the course manually so but there there is a format for that and the information must be provided as uh, per the format of the particular course and uh, we have already discussed that uh, uh, when we create new course so we go through different options and fields so that has to be taken care when we prepare the file and uh, the same file we have to import here and it, we have to ensure that that is the CSV file right now I do not have file but I ensure that I will show you that how we can prepare the CSV file and import here so that without typing or without adding the detail manually any course which is available in the file can be imported and can be made ready to use similarly the there is a upload mode uh, create new course only skip existing one so here you can set uh, these are the some uh, restrictions given create all increment short name if needed and create new course or update existing one only update existing courses so whatever you want you can set accordingly and then you can uh, proceed for uploading the course so this is all about in this video about the course now let let us move to the backup which is another important uh, option in this there are five options available here in the backup the first one is the general backup defaults which is having the default setting and you can see there are many options so I'll discuss one by one only the important one and rest of the things you can explore or we can discuss when we practice so the first option you can uh, see here that is given for keep logs for log means the file suppose you are taking backup every day so how long it will keep that file so this is said the number of days is set here so that the backup log information uh, it is kept automatically and uh, if it is more than of these days so it will be deleted automatically so it is always recommended to keep the value small so that the backup logged information can um, can I mean should not create any problem because this backup log information generally is used in nature so if your file size is very big so it will also create uh, uh, take lot of time and also create may create problem while taking the backup other general backup setting which is default in nature like it will include user 
anonymous information, role assignment, activities and resources, blocks and files, filters, comments. All these are the default value which is taken care while taking the back. Include calendar events and uh, include user completion information logs, histories, question bank, groupings and groups and competencies. So all these you can set here and you can take the backup accordingly and if you make any changes so you can just save the changes so that it will take effect when you open a Moodle next time. Similarly there are some other options available like general import default we have talked about the backup now let us talk about general import default so here also we have to do some setting like uh, maximum number of cores listed for import is 10 so by default it is 10 you can increase or decrease the number of uh, courses course list to be imported so this generally control the number of courses that are listed during the first step of import process then uh, allow admin conflict resolution by default it is no but if the site has an account with the username admin then attempting to restore a backup file containing an account with username admin can cause conflict so meaning is very simple that uh, you are already having admin username and the other which we are going to upload also has the name admin so that will cause con I means a conflict so if this setting is enabled the conflict will be resolved by changing the username in the backup file to admin underscore xyz so by default it is no if i set it yes so when i import the file automatically it will be taken care and other import setting is very similar to the previous one which we discussed it has all include activities and resources blocks filters events question bank competencies group and groupings so after that you have to just click on save changes so it will uh, save your settings for the general import defaults now you can see it is changed to and we are getting information changes saved now the other two this one three options that is the automatic automated backup uh, setup so you can set also the back for taking the backup automatically and this will take uh, backup on a particular schedule time so for that you need to enable the option by default it is disabled so if i choose the enabled or manual or disabled so it is up to you so if i enable it so what it will do if uh, uh, Manually, is, if it is selected, automated backup will be possible only by through the automated backup uh, CLI script. This can be done either manually on the command line or through Chrome job. So this we can do uh, with the help of a script and uh, the scheduling we can do here the day wise on particular given time like Sunday, Monday till Saturday all the days we names are given sunday monday tuesday like that so if you want any particular day uh, to set like i set it on friday and then i choose the time that it should execute exactly at 5 30 so accordingly i have to set the time so every friday it will execute the file at 5 30 and this will throw the output uh, in the given place so here also we have to set that where the backup will go and sit so this is automated backup storage so there are three options course backup uh, file area or a specified directory for automated backup or course backup file area and the specified directory so it is up to you by default it is course backup area and you can give the path also if you want so full path to the directory where you want to save the backup file so especially when we deal with the linux so you have to give like this slash home then or wherever you want and uh, if it is windows server then you have to choose accordingly your path and give the information i mean path here so it will throw the backup directly to the directory where you set how many backup you want to keep generally by default it is uh, set to one so 
the number of uh, backup you have set here it will automatically take uh, those number of times means two times it will take the backup and it will keep each course older backup will automatically be deleted and delete backup older than you can set here now five days if it is five days older than five days so it will automatically delete then minimum number of backup kept so you can set it is set to none so you can set one at least one backup should be um, kept here so a backup older than a particular number of days are de detect deleted it can happen that an inactive course ends up with no backup so to prevent this a minimum number of backup kept should be specified so if i select one so at least minimum one number of days backup i will be having in my uh, this uh, wherever i have set the storage area then use course name in backup file name you can by default it is set no but if you check it it will use the course name as part of the backup file name so it will help you to identify the backup easily in the particular folder then skip hidden courses by default it is set to yes skip courses not modified since those courses which is not modified modified since 30 days so you can skip them then skip courses not modified since previous backup so by default it is set to no if you select it so that will be skipped uh, and uh, which is not been modified since the last automatic backup so this requires logging to be enabled so this logging you will have to enable and then uh, other setting we have to do for the automatic uh, backup setting so like uh, note that this setting will also be used for the recycle bin like it will include users role assignment activities and resources blocks files and then filters comments badges events uh, user completion information logs everything and finally you save it so lot of informations are given here with option so accordingly we can choose for automated backup setting and uh, we can set the uh, i mean setting for taking the backup automatically so i hope i have been able to make you understand about the uh, how we can approve the request how we can set the general backup uh, setting how we can import the courses and also how we can set the setting for automated backup in next video we are going to discuss about some of the general restore option and also a synchronous backup restore so that will also help in Moodle to do the setting for rest of the working of the Moodle. So thank you very much. Have a nice day.